Welcome back to the Bike Radar News Show with me, Tom Law and Liam Cahill. Lots of you tell us under videos and reviews that bike prices are just too high. We've seen several of you blame such industry issues on just this. So we thought we'd take a closer look. Why do bikes cost more now and how did we get here? And actually, are we better off now than in 2010? Bikes, they're pretty expensive these days, eh? They are. It's the main purchase that you'll make both when you start out and when you want to upgrade. We barely raise an eyebrow when a new superbike appears on the scene with a five-figure price tag. That's pretty much now the norm for halo models from both mainstream manufacturers such as Trek and Specialized and brands historically associated with exclusivity such as Pinarello and Colnago. Now, if we take the average flagship road race bike from the big brands, we'd argue that they have gained a lot of great features. A 2024 bike will be more aero, it will be stiffer, it will have better shifting, it will stop better thanks to disc brakes, it comes with a power meter, and it has tyre clearance unheard of just a few years ago for a road race bike, making it fundamentally more versatile. Yeah, so despite all of these improvements, it's almost certainly lighter too. Although there may not be much in it because the older bikes had inherently more feathery rim brakes. Yeah. But while these things might be true for top end bikes, at the lower end, it seems like it's a bit less clear cut. Yeah, if you base the comparison solely on inflation adjusted figures, the newer bikes don't always offer great leaps forward without compromising elsewhere. If you want disc brakes, for example, you're typically going to drop down the groups at hierarchy at least one level, and weights have stayed either similar for rim brake models or increased for models that have switched to discs. And there is more to price rises than just design complexity. On the mountain bike sides, bikes are now longer, Tom, than ever before, and it's not just fresh air in there. That extra material does cost money. Yet yeah, it may seem small, but multiply that additional cost hundreds of thousands of times and you can see where the extra cost is. Those bigger bikes need bigger boxes, more packaging, you can fit less of them in a single container, so you need more containers for a single batch of bikes. It all adds up. Raw materials too, they've gone up, as have shipping costs. So when you go to buy a bike, you find, well, a higher price. So Dave Brailsford is famous for championing marginal gains for Team Sky, with all those little percentages adding up to a far bigger gain overall. And it's exactly the same with bike production, shipping, and the result is a higher price for the end consumer. But it's not just the technology, materials, and freight costs that have gone up. There is the human cost too. Wages are now higher than they were previously. Manufacturers employ more people and need to make more money to pay those people. It's no surprise then that bikes, on paper at least, look to be more expensive. It may sound silly to ask whether today's cyclist is getting a better deal at bike buying time than, say, a rider back in 2010. 13 years ago, we actually reviewed the giant TCR4. This 1,650 pound road racer got a full Shimano 105 group set, a carbon frame and Mavic CXP 22 wheels. Whack on 13 years of inflation and in today's money, the Bank of England's inflation calculator says the same bike would cost 2,435 pounds and 68 pence. Wow. Mosey on over to Giant's website and you'll find the closest equivalent TCR is the Advanced 2 at £2,249. It has better brakes, shifting wheels, the frame has been through 13 years of improvement and it has more gear. It is on every level a better bike. Okay, if you want 105 with hydraulic disc brakes then you will pay more. That bike is £2,699. So the TCR of today is actually a cheaper proposition than it was in 2010. Things aren't so rosy for you though on the mountain bike side, aren't they, Tom? No, not quite. But they're still not as bad as you'd think. So back in 2010, I built an Ibis Mojo HD 140 for around £4,000, which was a lot of money back then, just as it is now. 
Look at the equivalent Mojo today and it's priced at £6,799 for a Shimano XT build, just like the one that I built myself. It's a lot more modern than my old bike, but otherwise they're very similar. You've got the XT drivetrain, top of the line Fox suspension, nice wheels, exactly how I built mine over a decade ago. Using the same inflation calculator, my £4,000 back in 2010 would now be £5,900 or there or thereabouts. So it's not exact, but it's a lot closer than you might think. That £800 difference between the inflated price and the current price is only 13.5%, so not double as some people would have you no, believe in a lot of cases. Not. But I have to say, at the sensible end of the price spectrum, where most of us look to buy bikes, things are actually pretty darn good. There are actually a few brands that make brilliant bikes at lower prices. So why don't we bring a bit of good news into today's show and highlight some of them? Yeah, absolutely. So Triband, Catherine's own brand, makes one of the best budget road bikes. The RC120 will cost you a penny under £400. That is ridiculous value for a starter road bike. There's even a disc brake version, but that will add £100 onto the price. Now, if you want something a little racier, the Giant Contend 2 comes in at £879 in the UK, and the Contend 3 is $950 in the US. That's a bike that will have you sorted for group rides and sport teams, and it's also worthy of upgrades as you go along through your riding journey as well. For an endurance machine or a commuting dream, Trek's entry-level Demane AL2 is £775 or $1,100. And finally, we should mention the Vitus Razor. £700 and it gets a very sensible spec with wide tyres for a smooth ride. So there are some fantastic bikes out there for decent-ish money. Yeah, and over on the mountain bike side of things, Calibre is another brand that is chucking out great bikes at very reasonable prices. The Boss Nut has long been a favourite for under £1,000 if you want a full suspension bike, but they also do the Rake and Lion Hardtails, the Rake which myself and our videographer Robin used on a video earlier in the year when we went up to Scotland. And despite its very reasonable price of just £550, you're getting, yeah, it's ridiculous. It had hydraulic disc brakes, a decent suspension fork, Really, all it was lacking was a dropper post, then I'd be happy to ride that pretty and, much and, anywhere. And a, and a bit of talent. Yes, and a bit of talent. <laughs> Whoa! Well, I was how's, gonna, that, how's that nose? It's all right, thanks, mate. Lovely yeah, if nose. you want to see what happened on that video, then check out the link just above Liam's head. The bike industry is currently though in a worrying place with data from the Bicycle Association showing that total UK mechanical bike volumes fell 22% to an estimated 1.88 million units in 2022. This was 27% below pre-COVID levels in 2019. It's still a lot of bikes though, isn't it? Nearly yeah. 2 million. Forbes reports that Shimano is down 28% in year-on-year -year revenue, while Giant's first half of 2023 saw a revenue decrease of 12% in Europe. And from what we've seen of bike sales and clearouts in the past year or so, it may be the case that brands have just over-ordered based on pandemic cycling levels, that massive boom that we had back in 2020 and subsequent years. Yeah, absolutely. Then we get to the present day with people's budgets being squeezed by global cost of living issues, and you have a general drop in demand for new products. I, I guess the good news is that once those pressures begin to lift, demand for product will gradually increase and hopefully stability will return. Yep, that's what we need if we want the continued development of the bikes and kit we all love to ride. But what do you think of the current state of play? Will it get better next year? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As ever, if you like this video, remember to give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more, and we will see you next time.